You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. All right, folks, let's talk um, a little uh, deconstruction here. Bob Johnson, founder of BET, was on CNBC today talking about black voters in the election. Listen to what was said. Well, I'm still bullish on the uh, president's agenda. I mean, if you if you think about it, for uh, African Americans under Trump's leadership, we had the lowest unemployment rate for Black Americans in over 50 years, almost since they've been keeping uh, statistics on it. Uh, we also saw investments in. Uh, black businesses to, and uh, black communities through the opportunity zones. So you think that's how people were voting? Because there, stop, stop. Okay, so listen, I want y'all. We're gonna start and stop, start and stop. So here's the deal. First, black unemployment rate was 16.9 percent at one point in 2010. By the time President Barack Obama left in 2017, it was 7.5. Trump comes in at 7.5. It goes down to around 5.1. Uh, in November of 2019, then it begins to trend back up. What's the unemployment rate today among black people? About 14%. So if you examine the four years of Trump, economically it's not been good for black people. He also talked about seeing record investment in black communities through the Opportunity Zones. Sorry, Bob, I have no data. The White House released a report on the Opportunity Zones. I have it. There's nothing listed in it about that investment. They've said... $10, $11 $11 billion. Trump has said on the campaign trail, oh, $100 billion invested. There's no documentation. And then there's nothing that says specifically what was invested in African-American communities. Nothing. Zero. I've asked. I specifically sent emails to the White House asking for that very information. No one has provided it. So to say that there's investment in the black community through Opportunity Zones, that's simply not true. And if it is, Bob, please show us the data. Press play and was actually working for them. I also think black Americans were somewhat lackadaisical about, to say the least, about their support for Joe Biden and by extension, the Democrats' policy. I think uh, black Americans are getting a little bit tired of delivering huge votes for the Democrats and seeing minimal uh, return in terms of economic wealth, the closing the wealth gap, uh, job uh, creation, job opportunities. And uh, Joe Biden was not an inspiring candidate for uh, many black Americans. And uh, some of them stayed home, some of them voted for Trump. To me, the issue for, for, for the president now is well, obviously he's got to win. And the challenge is going to be uh, overcoming uh, the mail-in ballots uh, that are still to be counted. The difference... Okay, so Bob Johnson talked about being bullish on uh, African Americans. First of all, um, numbers don't lie. Black people delivered the election for Joe Biden. We saw massive turnout across the country, so that's actually not true. Now, you can say people weren't excited about Joe Biden. Who do they vote for? At the end of the day, votes matter. That's one. Two, when he said he's bullish on, the, on, on Trump's economic agenda, but who is it actually helping? Bob has been a billionaire, came off the list when he got divorced from Sheila Johnson, had to split that money half and half. But who's it actually benefiting? If you really want to talk about Trump's economic policies, who's it benefiting? Is it benefiting the top 1% that Bob Johnson's in? Yes. Now, here's the deal. I was texting Bob Johnson earlier today, told him I was going to be doing this, invited him to come on the show to talk about, to share these thoughts. Uh, he didn't. But the reality is this here, Bob. What you're laying out is not, it's not like Trump's economics plan uh, aren't all of a sudden just so great and wonderful. Now, are black people wanting more from the Democratic Party? Hell yes. Absolutely. Do we deserve more? Absolutely. But if you show me where we get more under Democrat or under, uh, or under Donald Trump, mm, Bob, I'm going to have to go with the Democrat. You know why? Because when I, look at the, when I look at the numbers, Bob, the greatest actually opportunity for African Americans economically was under a Democrat, Bill Clinton. Yep. Yeah, that's true. We look at the numbers, the per capita numbers. We look at the, the, the percentage of the people who were actually working. 
Yep. Black home ownership. Yep. All that. Democratic president. So to somehow suggest that black people have not benefited economically under a Democratic president is just simply false. In fact, the economy has performed better under Democratic presidents in the last 30 years than Republican. I know facts are a little rough. Press play. Says between black America and white America, if I've got money, white American can suffer a catastrophic loss of, say, the roof being blown off and having $170,000, they can fix it. A black family with $17,000 if all of a sudden they have a catastrophic event in their house or in their appliances that they need to, you know, keep food in the refrigerator and it breaks down, three thousand, four thousand dollar for a refrigerator is a emotional impact on a black family who has no access to capital to solve that catastrophic challenge. So, so to me, what I look for for progressive and liberals is is to say, look. What do black Americans really need? It's capital, access to capital, access to opportunity that gives them a chance to uh, deliver all that they want out of the American dream. Nobody speaks to that. They speak to uh, you know, voter suppression, yes. They speak to uh, police brutality. All these things are valid, but America is a capitalist nation, and in a capitalist nation, value is measured by your access to opportunity and the right to compete and achieve. And that's what... Okay, so let, 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 allow me to unpack that. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I've made the point to African Americans on this show in forums. I did so when I was in Indianapolis uh, at, the, um, at the State of Black America deal that was put on there by, by the Stewart brothers that African Americans should be making economics one of our top issues. That uh, What he said, the issue that we put in front, we don't. I said we should do that. But what he said, we should be talking about access to capital and opportunities. Did y'all realize that under President Obama and Joe Biden, those eight years, that the federal government recorded the percentage of minority contracts around 23%. That was the goal set. They exceeded that. That five, remember in the Trump's plan, he mentioned the 500 million. That's really the federal contracting program. Ice Cube kept saying he got Trump to commit to 500 billion for black people. No, he didn't. The 500 billion was really the federal contracting program. In that program, in the last, but before Trump, they exceeded 23%. Guess what happened when Trump became president, y'all? They stopped recording the data. So the reality is right now, we don't even know the percentage that minorities are getting in federal contract because Donald Trump and his people absolutely refuse to even share the information. Joe Biden said there was, excuse me, Bob Johnson said there was no plan for Joe Biden, an economic plan dealing with African-Americans. Go to my iPad. This literally is a plan. It was released in May of 2020. It's called Lift Every Voice, the Biden Plan for Black America. If you go through this plan, I mean, like literally, if you go through it, advance the economic mobility of African Americans and close the racial wealth gap, wealth and income gaps, it, it, it lays it out right there. When you go through this particular plan, help families buy their first homes, tackle racial bias that leads to homes and communities of color being assessed by appraisers below fair, fair value, roll back Trump administration policies, gutting fair lending and fair housing protections, uh, give local officials the tools and resources they need to combat gentrification. I mean, you can go uh, strengthen and expand the Community Reimbursement Act to ensure that our nation's banks and non-bank financial service institutions are serving uh, all communities. Establish a $100 billion affordable housing fund to construct and upgrade affordable housing. Uh, it goes promote more equitable wealth building and a more secure retirement. Equalize the tax benefits of defined contribution plans. I mean, this thing goes on and on. Expand access to higher quality education and tackle racial inequity in our education system. It goes, it's 22 pages. Donald Trump's plan, y'all, was literally two. It was really one. It had a cover sheet and it was one. So to say there's no plan, that's simply not true. Also, by the way, housing dropped to its lowest level since 1968 under Trump, 40.9% in 2019. Have y'all seen Trump's housing plan? I haven't. Press play. 
what the black community, in my opinion, wants to hear. Bob, do you think that four more years of Donald Trump is a good thing for the black community? I'll put it this way. Uh, based on if you take the past four years, the answer would be yes. If you take the uh, notion that Trump is focuses on building the economy, uh, building manufacturing, uh, creating more jobs, then the answer again is yes. And Come on, right there. Moody Analytics did an analysis of Trump's economic plan and Biden's economic plan. It said that Biden's economic plan would produce 7 million more jobs than Trump's economic plan. 7 million more. Donald Trump pop traumas promised, what, 3 million new black jobs? Y'all, we lost more black jobs because of COVID. So please explain to me how you're going to bring those jobs back. Especially when, when upwards of 50% of black businesses went out of business because of COVID-19. Press play. And so to me, I, I'm not fearful that a Trump re-election is going to be a, an assault on the political, cultural, social rights of black Americans. Stop right there. In fact, I want y'all to rewind that. I want you to go back to that part right there. I want you to bring it right back. I need everybody listening to what he just said. And let me know when y'all ready to play and go ahead and press play re-election is going to be a, an assault on the political, cultural, social rights of black Americans. Stop. He said he wasn't worried, in his opinion, that Donald Trump winning the next four years would not be an assault on the political, political social, cultural, and economic rights of black people. If you got almost a billion dollars. You don't care about the court, federal court system. If you got that kind of money, you're not worried about the use of federal uh, private prisons. You're not worried about no police consent decrees. You're not worried about U.S. attorneys charging to the high extent for weed and other marijuana laws, Jeff Sessions and Bill Barr. Let me also help y'all out. Not only the federal contracting decreased for, for minor, black and minority businesses, the Trump administration went back to bundling large contracts, which meant that you were a small firm, you couldn't compete for those large contracts. How in the world? Let me also, he said, I want y'all to roll that back one more time. Because y'all, he said the political, social, cultural. Go ahead and roll it back, hit play then the answer again is yes. And so to me, I, I'm not fearful that a Trump re-election is going to be a, an assault on the political, cultural, social rights of black America. Come and stop. The Trump administration is leading voter suppression. Republicans refuse to vote on the John Lewis uh, bill to fix the Voting Rights Act. That's an assault on the political rights of African-Americans. The Trump administration has done nothing about environmental racism. And in fact, they've allowed companies to just pollute even more so. Environmental racism affects the environment of black people. It affects our communities and our neighborhoods. Not the one Bob lives in, but the ones that our families live in. We can go through, again, Trump's court system. Trump has gutted civil rights uh, all across the federal agencies. He's gutted diversity training. So Bob, how could you come to the conclusion that four more years of Donald Trump would not somehow affect black people? If Donald Trump got four more years, he would be able to appoint 200 more federal judges. There are only 900. He will appoint half of the federal judiciary in America. These will be people 30 to 45 years old. Bob, you don't think that has an impact on black people? Press play. Uh, it didn't show up in the past four years in terms of economic opportunity. You know? And so to me, I don't see what the black community has gotten over the past 
uh, eight years of Democratic leadership or what, as I said, Joe Biden's put on the table. Uh, you know, I've, I've heard things like uh, reparations. Well, I can guarantee you that there will be no reparations bill coming out of uh, Joe Biden's uh, if he's elected. Because it won't, it won't pass the House, it won't pass the Senate, because this country does not really believe in reparations. Okay, see, now I'm confused. Now, this is the last point right here. I'm going to bring my panel in. I'm really confused right here. Go to my iPad for this headline. BET founder Robert Johnson calls for $14 trillion in reparations for slavery. So Robert Johnson hits Biden on reparations but then turns right back around and says, Michael, that the votes are not there, so therefore they won't vote for reparations. So you're so let me just get this straight. So so, so you're so you, Bob Johnson, have called for reparations. You're criticizing Biden because he has not embraced reparations. Yet you, Bob Johnson, then admit in the very same conversation that the votes reparations are not there. So if you're Bob Johnson, excuse me, if you're Joe Biden and the votes are not there for reparations, why would you actually include it in your plan? Knowing, and then Bob Johnson says that America's not ready to go there. Mm -hmm. So why would a Joe Biden put it in his plan if he knows the same thing that you know? What you heard there was, and again, I invited Bob to come on the show to discuss this. What you heard there is an African-American of means mm -hmm. who doesn't have to be concerned with any of these things down here on the ground because he's operating financially in a world where he is completely, completely separated and sheltered from everything else. Yep. Bob, when you're on private planes, you're not worrying about police brutality. You're not, when you're living on, with multiple houses on islands, you're not actually worried about um, racism by TSA, about flight attendants on planes. And so I take exception to so many things that he says because the data is simply not there to back it up. Michael, and then Niambi. Yeah. Well, well Roland, uh, you know, he said he said a lot, brother. Let me let, let's break this down very quickly here. Page 22 of, of Biden's plan to empower black America, tackle systemic racism and support a study of the continuing impacts of slavery. OK, now, Bob Johnson is partly correct where he said the votes are not there in the House and the Senate right now, because Moscow Mitch McConnell already said if he stays in the majority leader, reparations is dead on arrival in the in the Senate. But Donald Trump is against reparations. This is what I understand. Donald Trump is against reparations. Donald Trump doesn't even want to uh, support HR 40. OK, then we talk. Then we look at African-American on businesses. Forbes.com uh, had the article uh, back in August. Uh, dealing with how 41% of Black-owned businesses have gone out of business since April of this year because of the coronavirus economy is probably at least 50% now. When we look at Opportunity Zones, you posted the article uh, also, uh, Roland, Trump's unsupported claim about Opportunity Zone investments from factcheck.org. You posted that a few weeks Totally ago. unsupported. It's totally... Not only is it totally unsupported, when you actually read this, the $100 billion that Trump is throwing around as an investment... That's over. That's over the course of uh, uh, through twenty twenty eight. That's through the year twenty twenty eight. But that's a hundred billion dollars. And, and that's not even program. real. That's not even real investment. That's what we think yeah. might happen. Exactly. That's what we think. That's what we think might happen. Okay. And then you look at the uh, article from uh, October twenty third, twenty twenty, from NBCNews.com. Trump is touting opportunity zones as a huge success with no proof. This so you you it, it, so this doesn't make sense now. When you read the statements that Bob Johnson made about reparations, I read them. They didn't make. They, I read them. He talked about fourteen trillion, right? When you read what he says about it, he says that will mainly go back into the economy and support black-owned businesses. Well, ninety-seven percent of our dollars are spent with people that don't look like us. 
So what he's saying is reparations is largely going to benefit white businesses. That's what he's saying. When you go read his comments, okay? Then lastly, I'll leave it with this, brother. Bob Johnson didn't talk about the devastating impact that coronavirus has had on African Americans. When you look at just uh, uh, earlier this, uh, October 16, 2020, 8 million Americans slipped into poverty amid coronavirus pandemic, new study says. The majority of them were African Americans and Hispanics. When we look at the devastating impact that uh, coronavirus has had, means of uh, you still have about 25 million people unemployed, a lot of them African Americans, losing health insurance. Uh, 20% of the 236,000 deaths are African American. Notice how he doesn't even talk about the devastating impact that coronavirus has had on us. So he's totally out of touch. Okay, and, you know I, I, I applaud him for taking the $500,000 investment from uh, John C. Malone. I think it was that invested early on in BET. Okay, and 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 building the the, the empire. I, but when you get people like this, brother, and they talk about the black community, they don't live in the black community usually. So they totally. But but, but it's but, but Naomi, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I don't think this has anything to do with reparations or policy. I think Bob Johnson is thinking with his wallet. And quite frankly, most people, black or otherwise, don't have access to the level of wealth and the level of insulation that Bob Johnson has. And I'll pick up on a bead that Michael was talking about with the coronavirus. One of the things besides the dead, we don't know what's going to happen to the long-term coronavirus injured, many of whom are black and brown people, and we don't know what their health outcomes are going to look like, much less whether they can get employed again if they are able to maintain or have employment. So I think Bob Johnson here is talking in circles. What he wants to say is, Donald Trump is good for me financially, and I like him. And, and this has nothing to do with other black people. And that's and what, and, that's the end of it. and that's it. And that's what Bob should really just say: it's good for me. It's good for me as a rich. It's good for me as a rich guy. It really ain't about us. All right, folks, back to our whole Mark unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, at Seek.com, I want to thank them for being a partner with Roland Martin Unfiltered, Mary Spiel, the founder of this black-owned virtual reality company. You can watch their content at Seek.com, C-E-E-K.com. This is one of the headsets that you can use, this virtual reality headset. Drop your phone right into here. Look at that content, that VR content on their site. Other 360-degree video uh, puts you right uh, right there up close. So you just pop it on like this, and then you're able literally to just sit here and put yourself in the room and see everything that's around you 360 degrees. Now, uh, if you listen to music, folks, you can check out the music uh, on their uh, Seek.com headphones. These right here, folks, are 360 degree 4D headphones. The bass on these things are absolutely amazing. Surround sound, so literally when you're listening to it, the sound actually is around uh, your whole head again. Created by a system. Uh, if you want to uh, get uh, the headset uh, the, uh, for the uh, music or the VR headset, uh, simply use this promo code RMVIP2020. RMVIP2020. Christmas is coming up. Great, some great gifts. Matter of fact, my birthday in nine days. So I'm just just, just giving y'all a hint. Uh, so use the promo code RMVIP2020 uh, and go to seek.com. And again, we appreciate them being partners with us here at Roland Martin Unfiltered.